my brain hurts. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm sick. You're like, no, you're not. You're fine. You're good. So creep show, and then we'll do yeah. cat's eye, and then we'll do. Ah, no one, one gets out alive. That was weird. That was a weird one. Oh, amazing. Awesome. Okay. Creep show was the one I watched last. Yeah. Let me get some water really quick. Oh, of course. I know I'm like over here deep. <sighs> Delicious. Let's get into it. Guys, welcome to Horror at the Store. I'm your host, Katie Hettenbach, and today we have a wonderful, special guest. She's amazing. She's fantastic. We actually just met today. Currently, right now. <laughs> right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. It's Liz Holland. Hello. Give it up. Woo. Woo! We met through a mutual friend, yes, Je- Jesse Harris, who mm-hmm. was also on a few episodes. So mutual uh, horror fan, mutual horror yeah. fan. We b- both work in film as PAs and all that jazz that we do with uh, goals of other things. Hopefully, not just PA yes, forever. You know, no, all <laughs> for the rest of our lives. That's I do want to be a career PA. That's uh, you know th- that it, that is a that is a track for some people. Yeah, um, which is you know goes you know. Our, our hearts go out to them. You you rock. I can't do that though. No, my heart hurts. Okay, so the first movie we we watched was Creep Show. Yeah, it was nineteen eighty two, um, and we do a. I've again I've been calling it a one liner. It's the log line. A log line. It's a log line. It's it's. I got them yes. mixed up. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so we're doing a log line off of the title by itself. This one I had trouble with. I don't know about you. Um, I've done them for every single movie. Yeah. And I just couldn't think of anything. So this one is a boy finds himself trapped in an alternate terrifying carnival dimension filled with goblins and ghouls. Will he make it home in time for dinner? <laughs> Okay, that's actually iconic, and I love it, and I misunderstood the assignment. That's okay. But I'm going I with it. I want to hear it. I want to hear uh, it anyway. Mine was, Giallo Kill the Movie, the Anthology. I love that. Um, yeah, so nothing to do with Creepshow that's, itself besides the film. I love that. I love that. Um, so this is uh, a George Romero film, which yeah. I didn't realize. I forgot. When that came up, I was genuinely, I was like, oh my god, of course it is. I like, was like, I wait, is this the same? Because it said George A. Romero. I was like, wait, is this a, is this a different one? Is it's a Michael a, B. Jordan scenario. I was like, is this... I'm confused. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's... He just doesn't... Sometimes he uses... Yeah, sometimes I was like, I was like, oh. Yeah. I love that for you. Love that journey for you. Um, I love him, so I love yeah. uh, all of the Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, all those. Yeah. Um, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Dawn all of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Dead. He didn't do Return of the Living Dead. That one did not. That one I love that. Amazing. Yes, oh but... um. I, I also love him. Love practical effects. Oh, love a good B movie. And I feel like this is very much in line with like, you know, like the Peter Jackson making a brain dead. Like yeah. this is very much that. Oh, 100%. And it took me a minute to be like, oh, okay, these cutaways, these crazy like pop on the screen with a frame, like, you know, crazy color. You know, again, giallo lighting. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, of course. George Romero. Here we go. We got it. Um, so let's get into this. So it starts out with this dad... Um, who's throwing away his son's horror comic. Classic book. Stephen King child abuse. <laughs> Tragic. Had to say it. Tragic. And the comic book is like, you know, the creep show comic book mm-hmm. from the 1950s. And um, the, because this is based on a real comic book. Um, and the little boy, he's mad at his dad. And he's like, wow, you're the worst dad. You're oh, fun worst. fact. That's Joe King. That's Stephen King's son oh plays the kid. Yeah. That's amazing. Unless, I mean, again, everything. I'm the stoner, so anything I say, please fact check me. Yes. So, uh, you're a trope today. I had, again, let's go back. I had everyone be you a trope. You can't put me in a box, but I had everyone be a trope, and uh, you are the stoner. The stoner. The Classic. Stoner. Do you like my holes in these lovely flannels? Wow. I mean, you are. <laughs> that's that's a huge one. Oh my god. Yeah. Here we go. That's literally. Yeah. That's. that's There's no arm. You could literally put that through and like. I could like, tourniquet some some shit if you needed to, need which to. is good for a horror movie. That it. Is. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Look, look at us. Full circle. We did it. I love it. It's br- brilliant. So this little boy gets mad at his dad and. He's like in his bed. He's like, my dad threw away my comic books, and the skeleton appears, and that's when the real story begins. Yeah, <laughs> all five of them, and some of them are really. This is a long. This is a two-hour movie. Not that it was. No, it felt long. It really. I was like, I couldn't believe because I had the whole time. 
what I realized maybe 10 minutes in when I was looking at the cast, I was like, oh my God, I love Creep Show 2. I don't actually think I like Creep Show 1. Yeah. I was really, I was yeah. like, shit, I don't recognize any of this. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, I love all the ones in 2. It's yeah. like, this it's, movie's a slog sometimes. It's a lot. Um, so the first story is Father's, it's called Father's Day. And it's like, everything is, uh, it opens like in a comic book. And it's basically this, um, they're having this, this, this rich family is having a get together meal. And they're like, oh, great aunt Belinda, who supposedly murdered her father, bashed her father's head in with an ashtray. With is, this ashtray. This ashtray right here. Also, really quick. Is coming. I love the uber rich, LOL. How catty. Was a joke. Yes, that's literally. like what I wrote, yep. like immediately. Yep, you're like they're just they're so rich. They're like, oh, you're such a hog. Give me the 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 croissants, and I'm oh, like, oh yeah, you call your daughter fat. The fat fo- the fat shaming that occurs just within the family dynamic. I'm, I'm like, like, oh, mm-hmm. we love to see it. We love that, that we rich do. family dynamic that's portrayed in '80s cinema. It's the best. I do love the '80s. They are iconic. Um. And so this rich family, they're all hanging out at the estate. And Belinda, um, great aunt Belinda, she comes and she visits. Uh, and they're so rich that they have a graveyard oh, yeah. on site. I honestly think that's kind of cool. <laughs> Not that I would want a graveyard the family house, plot. But it's like a family no. plot on the estate. I would love that. I would love my family estate. It's very, you know, but, keep it in the family. But also haunted as shit. Yeah. So I'm like. Well, Whoa. I mean, you can tell from her hair, you know, oh, yeah. how she's, haunted the movie's about she's, to be. Her hair is is. It's special. It looks like mine when I brush it out. Mm. Um, just and then make it gray. <laughs> yeah, frizzy and sad. Um, and so at the estate, and Belinda's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go, you know, uh, pay my respects to my dad, even though I fucking hate." Which him. she does every year on Father's Day, like clockwork. Yep, she picks a flower, uh, puts it by his grave. And she starts having these flashbacks of when her father was alive. And it's just her dad going, I want my cake. I want my cake, you dumb bitch. God, you're stupid, <laughs> dumb bitch. And you're like, whoa. Again, okay. classic Stephen King father issues. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. I'm like, that's that's a lot. Yeah. Of That's a lot. I also do like how often, though, in that short, that the Belinda character is like, Dad, you called me a bitch. Like yeah, I literally. am totally dad. Like she's like, I killed you because you were mean. Yeah, and you were a the dick. Whole time, and, you're like, and yeah. she's like, no, I can't deal with it. So you know, and then you see her bash his head in. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, so she did do it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, and she's like drinking. She's just unhinged as fuck. And but uh, it's uh, what she's drinking Jameson. Yeah, yeah. It's I some, mean, something that I was like, oh, okay. I mean, she knows how to party. She knows how to party. <laughs> And all of a sudden, her dad's corpse, zombie skeleton, pops out and starts crawling at her and, like, immediately, like, kills her. And then it cuts back to the family on the inside. And I found out his name was Hank, the Mm -hmm. um, son-in-law. Very American. uh, Yeah. Dirty, you know, salt of the earth name. (laughs) That took me so long to figure out what his name was. I was like, I need to figure. Is that Ed Harris? Who plays that role? I'm so sorry. I watched it super high. I have no idea. It was someone. (laughs) It was somebody um, who was awesome. So he wanders in and he's like, oh, I'm going to go see Belinda. Wanders into the graveyard. Immediately Mm -hmm. trips. And then falls into the grave plot. And every time he moves, the grave above him, like, shifts to Yeah, like, telekinetically kind of. And he's like, oh, God, if I move enough, this is going to fall on me. Uh, Starts to move more. Sees Belinda dead next to him. She falls on him. And then the dad's like, I want my cake. And then the grave falls. And then he dies. Um, And then the dad's, like, like, grudgingly, like, walking towards the house. Yeah. And... Oh, he's to finish uh, all of that revenge. To finish the job. And the mother figure is like, I'll go see where Hank is. I'll go look for him. And With a little bit of weird subtext that, like, maybe I'm going to go uh, seduce him. Um, she's like, I might be into my daughter's husband. Yeah. But I might not be. I don't know. We're a rich family. Things happen. Ooh. Um, and wanders in. And the hus- or the dead father... Just rips off her head. Oh. Just yeah. pop, rips, like, pops it off. Like, yep. I was like, oh, 
Like, you know, when you were little and you would do the... With, like, a Barbie doll, yeah. Barbie doll or... I was going to say dandelion. Um, oh, but Barbie dolls are... Uh, I, I don't know if yeah, I Yeah, Barbie... totally the heads come off of dandelions. Yeah, not I was dolls. like... Yeah, not dolls. What's... Are you okay? Um, that I wasn't. That's serial killer tendencies right there. Um, <laughs> I was thinking, like, when you, like, would take the the, uh, the head of a dandelion and you go, Mom, I had a baby and the head popped off. And you'd, like... See, th- that's also serial yeah, killer tendencies. Yeah, I maybe that is. That. Never mind. I, never I shouldn't be that. talking anymore. Okay, anyways, um, back to this. Um, <laughs> um, oh, God. And so the, the, the daughter and the son-in-law... No, son-in-law's dead. The daughter and the... Her brother. Her brother. Yeah. Are just vibing and they're like, oh, we should probably go look for Well, it's niece and nephew mom. just being like the the boys just I am I'm just gonna get drunk and she's like, I'm scared. Will you help? And he's like, Oh, you sister, I don't care. And he's like, just go with me and I'm like, fine, okay, we'll go. And they walk into the kitchen and who walks out before them? The dead father. Father's Day cake. Father's Day cake. <laughs> with a Father's Day cake, and the cake is the mom's head with candles yeah. on it, and they goes Happy Father's Day, and they go Ah, and then it just cuts. Yeah, and you're well, like, but it does the thing where it transitions first into comic, yes, and it does and like it, that last line, which I think is like the next step is to blow their candles out, and it's just like these cute, like what I really appreciate about Creep Show, and what I think like the the kind of cold open and ending allude to yes. is like that sometimes it's just fun to have like. Well, we're fucked endings. Yeah. And I think oh, Stephen yeah. King is such a good, like, well, we're fucked, you know, ending writer. Oh, yes. That it really works well to be like, oh, yeah, this isn't about, like, she was correct to murder her abusive father. It's like, oh, well, he's going to come back and get revenge on everybody because this is a horror short. Yeah, it doesn't, so yeah. It doesn't matter. There's like, no morals. There's ev- no morals. Everybody's just... going to die. Yep. Um, this next story is called The Lonesome Death of Jordi Viril. And <sighs> this one, first of all, Stephen, it's Stephen King. It's little yes. baby Stephen King, which I was like, why does this guy look like Bill Hader? Which makes it's interesting though. I'm like, Bill Hader could play. Well, Stephen he King. kind of has. But I'm yeah, he was in Steve, but he could like play if they do like a A biopic. A biopic. He could be Stephen King. Also, Stephen King biopic, actually very interesting. That's interesting. Maybe we should do that. We, we should, should do that. We should that's, do that. That's Is a that yeah, my Did we just wow? Don't nobody steal exactly. that. Exactly. Patent pending. Patent don't, pending. Nobody touch that. Stephen Can King, I, we're coming. For also, you. before you start the plot, yes. I want to really quick say I ranked all of these. Oh my god! And for sure, just this is the last. Yeah. This is like I love Stephen King, and nothing makes me happier than like that moment where he's a cop in like Pet Cemetery, yeah. or that moment where he's in like you know Sleepwalkers Thin or whatever. Yes, Sleepwalkers. Love yeah. those. He's just, he doesn't, like, this, it just, I, it's boring, it's too long. It's, the effects are cool. It was really cool. It it made me feel so bad for him. So he's a farmer and he finds this meteor and he's like, oh, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. But he's also like a a farmer who like just touch an asteroid meteor or whatever. It's like, yeah, he's the dumb hick. He's he's an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. And he immediately is like, I'm going to touch it. And he touches it and he like gets shocked or whatever. And then it like splits in half. Yeah. And then he pours water on it. Question. There's some sort of like liquid interaction. Yeah, like, we don't know what that is. And, um... Over the course of days, his, like, fingers start to develop this, like, I said it was, like, grass or, like, moss. Yeah. It just looks like green goo, and then it turns into moss, grass. Um, And it literally, over the course of days, just starts covering his body. It's kind of a weird, like, at first, lawnmower man, like, yeah. illusion. Not lawnmower man, the version that we know and love, uh, you know, in yes. theatrically. But, like, the lawnmower man where it is, like, the guy, like, eats the grass, becomes that. It's... Yeah. Uh, that's that. That is what I like about these. Is even though they're all originals, they do kind of like draw back a little bit to his stories. Oh yeah, and eventually his whole house is covered in this green grass, and he just keeps growing, and this green grass is just all over him now. And the saddest part is in the end, he's just a full blob. Oh yeah, and he is so sad. I literally was like, oh poor buddy. He he goes. He, he pulls out a shotgun and he goes, God, just one time, please, please just let me have my way. And I was like, buddy, no. I know. I know. And then he kills himself. And I yeah. was like, oh, no, poor buddy. But at least, uh, poor, poor buddy. I, I felt know. so bad. And again, it's like no one does a great ending like he does. Like oh, just yeah. that dark, like, oh, well, that's great. It's like, yeah, once it starts, it doesn't stop spreading. Yeah. You're just like, oh, man. 
Poor, poor Jordy. Poor, yeah. poor, poor little Jordy. But also, again, that's like my least favorite of them because oh, it's yeah. so like one note. It's all of these, despite, again, there being five, all of them feel longer oh, yeah. than they possibly could. And there's yeah. just a lot of scene chewing at the beginning, like a lot of setup. Yeah, and I'm just like, okay, let's get into it. Um, yeah. Okay, this is the third one. Um, uh, something to tide you over. This one was, so Harry Wentworth, which is played by um, a young Ted Dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. he's adorable. Um, he meets, or this guy, he's, like, in his apartment, and this guy comes to the door, and his name is R- 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 Richard. That's always been a hard word for me to say. I was going to say Leslie Nielsen. That, <laughs> yes, that too. Um, he comes to the door, and he's like, I took Becky, who's your wife, girlfriend, lover. You're something. And we're like, cool. Um, and you know, take some, and he's like, okay, I'll take you to, you know, Becky. Mm-hmm. I'll take you to her. You just have to come with me. And he's like, okay, fine. And then they go to the beach, and he's like, Where, where's Becky? And yeah. uh, Richard, there we go, got it. He, um, he's like, he pulls out a gun. He's like, get in the hole. And he's like, what? And so he makes him, he makes Harry go into this hole on the beach and is like bury yourself up to your head so he does so because he's got a gun pointed to his head he doesn't want to and um he's like oh okay i'm gonna leave you now bye so he leaves for a little bit except what i love is the amount of uh cctv and kind of like like he leaves him with a monitor i know he comes back later but i love like just the leaving but being like you can still watch, or I will still be watching. There's so much, like, interesting, like, technology you're in like, this how, one. Well, you're like, what kind of generator are you using? What, what, what's the exactly. Wi-Fi situation? Exactly, exactly. Because that would never happen now. Um, dear God. I mean, it would, but, like, you know. You but it need, would take a couple of my fives. It would take, it would take a little bit, a couple of those. Oh, good times, my fives. And um, he comes back, and he's like, oh, I'm going to set up this TV in front of you. And it's showing Becky... Um, in the same position uh, as as uh, Harry, but this time the wa- the tide is coming in. Yeah, I and love that it's like, oh, she flipped a coin, so she's lower on the beach. Like, so many of these, like, movies are just about, like, a coin toss or luck or, mm-hmm. like, a bet. Like, I kind of love where it's like, if you can get out of this alive, you're alive. Good luck. All but- of the villains are just like, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, but you're probably going to die anyways. Yeah. And so he uh, goes, or the... The, oh my God, Richard. <laughs> the, Richard. There we go. He is like, well, you know, have fun because she's she's dead. You can we can watch your you can watch your lovely girlfriend die, yeah. and then the tide starts coming in, and Harry's freaking out, and of course Harry dies because when the tide comes in, and yeah. you're buried, you're gonna die, and. Richard's just in his house watching the live feed. Really quick. Richard, love his sweater at the beginning, love his necklace at the beginning, and then he does a full change and is in, like, some weird kind of, like, velvet, like, couture, like, tracksuit. Love it. You're like, that's a villain. Leslie Nielsen. You're like, that's a villain we need more. I love that actor so much. He's, like, he's been so many, like, lovable characters but also hateable ones. And I'm just like, I love you, sir. Is he still alive? No. I think, did he die recently? I, I think it was longer ago than I, I do this every time. There's a couple people where it's like, I'm pretty sure it was a while ago. Okay. It's like, it was like 2016, but we think it's like a year yes. ago. Yeah, yes. Yes. Because that. time is an illusion. I think it's still 2010 in my head. So it's, it's been a long road for 2014. me. 2014. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, so you get me, you get me. Um, and so this man's watching Harry and Be- Becky's feeds um, like, you know, just wa- watching them on tapes. He's got hundreds of tapes and it's just watching them like slipping a martini and he starts getting paranoid. He's like, oh, I think something's coming for me. But and then he goes and has a shower. He has a shower. Of course. A that's, that's what you do if you're scared. Of it. You shower. <laughs> and Harry and Becky are like these like water zombie things and they're undead and they just come in to say hi and are like, hey, you did this to us. We just want to see you. I love that they keep saying that, which is so creepy. They're like, we just want to see you and then kill you. So they basically do the same thing and they waterboard him and then he dies. Yeah. But again, I love that it's like everybody dies. Yeah. It's not like they escaped magically somehow. Everyone yeah. just dies. Everyone's just dies. That's just the moral of the story. It's creep show. Everybody dies. Yeah. Um, 
The fourth, the fourth one. We have two more. Good God, these are so like awkwardly long, but they're they're just. I'm gonna say we do not need to talk about creeping on you, probably, which is the fifth one, because it's like, listen. Besides the fact that bugs are a great gross out, it's just an episode of the Twilight Zone where it's like, I'm gonna get phone calls where people are mean. It's like it's very literally, honestly. Let's talk about that one. So uh, they're creeping on you. It's just a man who's germaphobic and. Uh, He's, yeah. got, he's got a germ-proof house. And but like doomsday almost, yeah. yeah. And cockroaches invade. Yeah. And, and it's one of those cool things where it's like, are they actually there or are they not? Yeah. Because you you have that moment where it's like everyone won't come because they're like, we always, you know, the, yeah. the uh, exterminator is always coming here. But then at the end, it's kind of implied, like, maybe everyone put these bugs in your house because you're such a dick. Yeah, he's a piece of shit yeah. to his workers, his friends, yeah. everybody. That one also has some interesting, like, um, racial dynamics. Like, there's, yeah. like, the... Um, the guy who takes over, like the night manager. The, I think it was the, the it was the yeah. exterminator. Yeah. Oh, it was. It was the, but it was the guy who was calling the exterminator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just a very weird. Like, I, I was very. I was just like, oh, okay, this is the eighties. Very uncomfortable. Like, okay, I copy. don't like that. And yeah. um, but the exterminator, um, he comes and he's like, oh, I'll take care of the cockroaches. I'll come back in the morning. Mm-hmm. And he's like, cool, awesome. And uh, meanwhile, there's just like cockroaches everywhere, and this guy locks himself into. His like panic room yeah. question mark again. Everything was kind of like, is this a panic room? I don't know. Yeah, just a safe room, and cockroaches just invade, and they like crawl into his mouth, and he basically dies. And so the um, the next day, uh, you know the guy, the exterminator's knocking mm-hmm. on the door. He's like, hey, I'm here. I'm here to get the bugs. Get them out. Get them yeah. out of there. And the guy's just like dead. Like in yeah. the panic room, and, and all, all just, this, and all of a sudden they just start like crawling out of him. Yeah. But it's not. It's gross, but it's not, like, gory if it was done today. Yeah. I feel like it would be so much blood and, like, gore and you'd see everything. But it's just so simple that yeah. it's just it, – and the practical effects hold up They so do. So well. A lot of this movie, I, I will say, the effects hold up. Again, how B it is. Like, when you just, like, stop and are like, this is a B movie. These are, like, B comics. This is supposed to be this way. Yeah. I do think there's a lot of joy to be had here, even though, again, some of them are a little bit, like, chewy the scenery. It takes a little bit to get into them. Yeah. I do like them. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to the fourth one. Uh, this the is the crate. Probably the best. I one. liked. It. I yeah. It <laughs> besides the outro. The, intro. Oh my god. Okay. So it starts with this college faculty party, and everyone calls me Billy. Okay, you should just call me Billy. There's this bitch, Billy, and she's so fuck. She's like, "What are you doing, Harry or uh, Henry? Her husband. Henry, Henry, what would you do without me? You would do nothing without me, Henry. Oh my god!" And Henry is just like he's having visions of just killing her. Yeah. Just like, and then people applauding. I love like, this moment yay. where it's like he kills her, and then everyone's like, "Thank God, someone just shut her up." Good shot, old sport. She's Good basically shot. like a Karen. Yeah, it's just like you just you know just sorry to Karens, but not uh, kill you. Know, don't, like they're like, no, not don't do that. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, but this in particular, but he was okay, like, he she's was a like, Billy. She's a Billy. She was a Billy, and it was like she deserves to die. Yeah. She deserves to be killed. Yeah. That's where I was going. <laughs> but again, these ones are always like people deserve it, but like yeah. no one deserves it. But oh, it's okay. Yeah. We're just it's gonna like, kill people. At, like at this point, everyone just deserves to die in this. Um, but so Billy's just belittling Henry and his coworker, uh, Dexter, he gets this call that there's this crate found under the stairs at a college and it's an uh, from an Arctic expedition. 1834. 1834. And maybe. maybe next, maybe. yeah. <laughs> and so the next day, um, Henry is at his house and he has a vision of choking out his, wa- his wife Billy and I just think that's hilarious. Yeah. And then she's like, what are you staring at? And he's like, I think. And then cut back to Dexter finally going to the school to look at the crate. Mm-hmm. And it's revealed that it's inside this crate is like a chimp. Yes. Sasquatch. I love the, the creature mix ups. Like it's kind of like a werewolfy version of an ape. But it looks really short. Yeah. It looks really tiny, but like also large. So it's confusing, and he just eats, just eats people. like a jan- he's like a janitor. He eats a couple people right away, and it's just the most epic, spe- like special, like rip yeah. hearts. And you just see that's them rip like apart. definitely some of the best practicals. I think I like I I wrote I love some practical death effects. They're like so good. Oh my god, it's just so easy. And then there's this okay, <laughs> so <laughs> then Henry. And Dex, they meet up, and Dexter tells him 
about you know this creature His problem <laughs> and henry's like oh i got an idea so he goes to the school he starts cleaning up the blood yeah. and he leaves his wife a letter that's basically like hey dexter's in some trouble some woman trouble i need you to save me i need you to come help me and i just what would i do without you i just want to point this out so she points her she pours herself a glass of milk okay um no i'm from wisconsin so i you know, I drink milk yeah. occasionally. Okay. So she wants herself a glass of milk, which is, you know, that's 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 not that creepy. That's weird. It's like, you know, that's like a, you know, trope in yeah. uh, horror movies where the villain drinks milk. Um, So she goes to the school. Okay. But she brings the glass of milk with her. I was I like. I did not notice that. And I'm obsessed with that. I'm obsessed are, with that. Like, okay, I, I drink milk, but I drink it in private. I'm not oh, going to yeah. go out of my way to drink a glass if in I public in public why would you bring I a know. glass and that's so weird I don't know that was like I was like this yeah. that that was the thing that stood out for me and so <laughs> just pours herself a glass of milk and then brings it I don't oh, know yeah. she also was like drunk driving on milk like yeah, I, I couldn't tell I, I mean I'm like, sure she drank her I was like night, damn but. what you put in that milk I was like good for you is it I bet you it's like like that for, you know, it's oh. like whole, or what if it's, ooh, she's ooh. getting high on that whole she's, milk. <laughs> oh god damn, it's, it's the whole milk. Is that what it does that? Um, so she's like there, she's at the crate, and Henry's like, you just gotta, you just gotta look at it, you just gotta look at it. And she's like, what? Okay. Yeah. I love that then he like there's this whole like he pushes her and she's really close and then for a second you're like oh fuck like and she just out. starts belittling him she's like you're nothing without me oh my god you can't even get it up in bed oh and you're yeah like, oh, and it's at the point where you're like okay if I didn't want you dead now you should just die yeah. and I want to see it happen mm-hmm. and then the creature just eats her yep and just she's just in, but as she's also still kind of insulting him but just eating him yeah or eating her and. Oh, my God. And she, so she's dead. She's dead as fuck. And Henry's like, oh, I should probably, like, lock the crate so nothing else happens. Oh, yeah. And then it's like, oh, I'm going to put it into my car and throw it off a, a, a cliff into some water. Which is like, we all know that you're always going to break out. There's always room for a sequel. Yep. <laughs> and, of course, it does escape. Yes. And it's it's on the loose again. It's I kind of like the idea that they should have just kept it and, like, used it for their, their purposes. Yes. These two just hilarious, like, chess-playing old men. But it's just, like, they... And also, they were sleeping with students. Um, That felt to me more like that was potentially going to be a good relationship for him. Yeah, honestly, he... Yeah, I'm, ki- yeah. I'm kidding. Well, she maybe. is way too young for him. <laughs> and it seems... I don't believe that they were actually, that he was having affairs with students. I think that was a cover story to tell Billy to get her down there. There were so many little, like... There were one or two flirts at the party. But oh, I'm yeah. also like, listen, have you seen American Psycho 2? We're not getting that territory. I mean, that. we will. Uh, we're, we're covering that in a later episode. So, <gasps> well, yeah. there you go. A yeah. little bit of student yeah. teacher Shatner. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, yeah, so what did you give this out of 10? What did you think The overall? film as a whole, the anthology... Um, I have a really hard time with anthologies because you can't. I'm I'm a very like lowest common denominator, but also you can't. You know whatever. Yeah. Six point five. Okay. Meaning to me though that like not an American scale of like a seven is a C, but more like a this was better than fifty percent. This was better than you know halfway yeah. there. A lot of people put a lot into this. Um, personally, I'm not like. M- I love a good B movie. I love a good so yeah. bad. It's good, but. It's not, like, my taste, especially with horror. Yeah. So it's, like, I'd rather be watching... If we're going to watch, like, Stephen King original content, Rose Red or Storm of the Century, like, I'd rather be in a little mini-series, like, yeah. creep mood. Um, so, like, 6.5. Yeah. It, it's great, and I, I recommend it to everyone, and I really love what Romero did. I love what Stephen King oh, did. amazing. And even though, again, Stephen King's not my number one favorite actor for a whole thing, yeah, he really, I did he care did. about him. He was... I, I felt yeah, really he bad. Was really I, sw- I, I love that. I love that story. Yeah. I gave it a six. I cool. gave it a six. So, so six point two five, right in the middle of us. I love that. that yeah. that's it's easy. It's fun. I enjoyed it. It was yeah. chaotic. Um, some of the stories were, I was like, okay. Yeah, but everyone should go watch Creep Show too. Oh yes, you've Creep seen Show Creepshow. I have not seen Creep Show. <gasps> I've never seen any of these. Holy shit! Okay, Creep Show Two has this like probably one of the best ones is these people on a raft and like this goo. So you Ooh. gotta watch it. That's one of my favorite for shorts. For the goo. Yeah, for the Noted. goo. Okay, I'll Which, again, I was watching this, and I'm like, where the fuck is my goo? And then Where's I'm like, the goo? And I called my friend, and he's like, you've only ever shown me clips from Creepshow 2. And I was like, have I only ever seen it? No, I'd seen this before, <laughs> but a while ago. I love that. Well, do you want to promote anything? Um, probably just my Instagram. Uh, movie Maniac Girl 
um, girl with an I. I'm not, you know, no use over here. Um, and then I don't know. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's Amazing. it. I promote on my Instagram story a lot of the stuff I work on. So I love that. Yay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in of and course. watching this movie with yeah. me. Yeah. Thank you for having me at the store. Of course. And I will see you guys next time at Horror at the Store. Woo. Ooh. 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 I like Ooh. that. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes we do it. Sometimes we don't. <laughs>